Yes. Welcome back to the Good Chat Season 2. My goodness, um, it's now presented by Great Southern Bank. How good is that? Could even be great. But we are very lucky today to be joined by Daisy Spag Walker, first Ooh. guest of Season 2. How do you feel about that? I am so honoured to be here, Goody. Yeah. I, I was so shocked when I got the text that they wanted me. So yeah. here I am. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> I am so blessed that Rose asked you. <laughs> it wasn't you? No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I kind of just <laughs> rock up to chat. <laughs> All the behind the scenes work is not my job. <laughs> um, but so you were recruited from Sandy Dragons in 2020, debuted yep. in 2021. Yep. And you've seen a bit of the change in the club. I have, yes. There's been a bit of a role change for you as well. How are you finding it all? Um, good. I'm no pun intended. Um, <laughs> Everything's good here. <laughs> uh, no, really good. It's been a really good change. Um, a lot of new challenges this season in particular. Um, but that's always a good thing. Opportunity for us to all grow as a team. Um, people stepping up to new leadership positions. It's all real positive change, which I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, we love that. So with your role, you float between like winger, defender. Which role do you like most and which one are you wanting to kind of like mm. define as like that's what I want to be as a footballer? That's a tough question because heart and soul through and through, defender. Um, they say that. <laughs> <laughs> and our backliner is, is where my heart's at, but... I am really enjoying playing on the wing this preseason. Um, it's been a really good challenge and a new growth in my game, which I've really liked. So I would like the opportunity to float through the wing, but also having my my float back. Your to roots, the, yeah. Your roots is defending. Yeah, yeah. Have you always been a footballer? No, basketballer. No? Ooh. Just like you, Goody. Yeah. How good. Yeah. We love a baller. <laughs> I feel like we could make a basketball team. We could like a three on three. Yeah. Shotgun having Tay. Mua? Mm. I'll have Kez. Oh, yeah. Me, Kez, Tay. Oh, okay. On to I don't want to be on your okay, team what's anyway. Your, what's your three-on-three <laughs> three team? My three-on-three three team, if we're picking from the team, um, am I excluding you three? Because well, you you're could, on one team? Yeah, okay, so that's the team you're versing. Okay. Oh. Um, me, I reckon Mua's got some skills. She just talks herself up, but that's yeah, fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's all you need on the basketball court, so yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, who else plays basketball on our team? Trudge. Trudge did. Um, Dana. Meals did. Dana. Dana. Oh, the yeah. Irish basketball. Irish. And she's actually done a bit of three on three. Uh, well, she's on my team. Sign yeah. up. Yeah. All right. We'll beat you. Yeah. This season, we're starting with a little icebreaker question. And our icebreaker question, because the ice hasn't been broken already, oh. is our go-to smoothie ingredients. Go-to smoothie ingredients. Oh. Um, it's normally what is, whatever's in the fridge or freezer, but mm. banana, raspberries, strawberries, mango. Wow. You've got a big smoothie. Yeah. Just shuffle it all in there. Banana berry? Banana berry smoothie. Banana berry, yeah, That's normally. Your normal it's normally go to. some bananas that need using up, so I just throw a few in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fun fact for my smoothie today, I just had strawberries and a kiwi fruit. Oh. And that, vanilla protein. How did that go? It was really good. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Kiwi fruit, skin on or off? If I'm just eating it? Yeah. I can do either, but I like to spoon it out, so skin on, just eat the inside. Okay, so you off. don't eat the skin? No. Okay. I put the whole <laughs> kiwi fruit in. I just chucked it in. I thought like that'd be fine. You don't taste the skin anyway. It's so, delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Now, um, outside of footy, what do you do outside of the club? Uh, I'm at uni part-time doing a Bachelor of Sport Development. I've just mm -hmm. transferred over. So What were you doing before? I was doing a Bachelor of Sport Science. Yeah. Um, wasn't really for me, so I thought I'd try something new. Yeah. Um, How are you finding it? Yeah, good. It's relatively the same, just minus the science pretty much. So <laughs> Good. <laughs> just easier. Yeah, um, more business, like managing yeah, more business side, side of it. Yeah, yeah, rather than the science, biomechanics. Yeah. Was just the not, GPS, the biomechanics. It's not for me. I'll leave that to 
yeah. Steve and the high performance team. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. It's just <laughs> yeah. memorising it a bit. Yeah. Um, and you're enjoying the part-time because you were full-time, weren't you? Or uh, you were I was working originally well. yeah. a few years ago, but I just thought it would be easier to manage footy loads, uni loads outside of work. I mean, outside footy commitments like work and things. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've cut back with work this year as well, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah. So I I quit my job earlier this pre-season just to focus on footy. Just don't need the extra cash at the moment. So... Yeah, so, and I think with the season or with our program, how it's going. Yeah, um, it's if you can living at home. Yeah, you can manage it's, it's it. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how good. And outside, uh, doing to unwind. What do you do to unwind? Um, I do like my me time. Just a bit of going for a walk, headphones in, or lying on my bed reading my book. That's yeah. probably my go-to's. Just okay, what are you listening to? Um, podcast, music, what are you reading and what are you watching? I don't have a TV show at the moment. I'm okay. struggling to find one. Right. Um, I just finished The Alchemist book. Oh, I reckon I've read that. It's really good. I maybe probably have. A few people have in yeah. the team. Um, I recommend it. It's a really Give different. Give me a rough summary. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like life lessons through a story of a boy who goes to find his treasure but what is his true treasure kind of thing okay yeah okay listening listening uh podcast my go-to podcast is do you know the inspired unemployed podcast yep. i listen to them but they're on a break at the moment so so out of podcast the, the good chat the good chat kind of fills is that space slide in <laughs> um <laughs> sponsored by great something bank <laughs> um yeah, they're my go-tos and then just music, just everything. Everything? You or, don't have a go-to artist? Not really. I sort of fluctuate whatever mood I'm feeling. Okay. If I'm feeling... Float a bit of country in there? A little bit. Yeah. That's not, my not, go-to at the moment. Not hardcore country. I, I'm not around that right now, but... Yeah. We just dabble we a little dabble bit of a little Luke bit of, Yeah. Oh, how good. Yeah. And <laughs> off-season, how did you spend it? What did you get up to? Um, I did a bit of travel. I went... Mm. Um, did a road trip around South Australia. That's a great place yeah. I hear. Yeah. It yeah. was really nice. Really recommend it. Um, beautiful beaches, might add. Just Lovely saying. coastline. Underrated. Mm. Um, Favourite spot that you went? Oh, it was down one of the peninsulas. One of the York Peninsula? Yes, York Peninsula. It was on just one of the – near the end of it, just stayed there for a week, just camping, bush yeah. camping. Beach to ourselves. Surf? Gold. I can't surf. <laughs> I boogie board. Oh, god! Yeah. <clears throat> it's known for surfing down there. No, I was on the surf bit. I was on, like, the flat bit where it was, like. So you're in the whitewash just boogie boarding. <laughs> just running. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And are you still called Spag? I of am. Of course you are. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's a silly question. <laughs> Stuck around. What are we, four four seasons? Four Four seasons seasons. in. Still got it. Yeah. Why have you been called Spag? Um, It started at Sandy Dragons. Um, One of my old teammates, she used to think I had long arms, so she called me Spaghetti Arms Spag. And then Mua got caught wind of it and here we are. When Mua catches wind (laughs) of a nickname, even when she tries to create one for herself. Well, it's stuck, hasn't it? Yeah, so. I don't know if it's stuck. But it comes up every now and then. It does. Yeah. I was talking to my mum um, and I don't know how Mill came up. She's like, does she still go by Cha-Cha? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, 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 she does. No one told like, her that, but yes, she does. Yeah, she still goes <laughs> she by it sometimes. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> Now, into some footy chat. Wrap up last season. What were the learnings from it? Um, There were a lot of learnings to take from last season, um, position-wise, team-wise, just a lot of growth, I guess, as a team as well. Um, What we want as a team, our goals, what we want to achieve, even off the field as well. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of learnings to take from last season. Yeah, Yeah. and I feel like... It's put us in good stead for the change yeah. that's happened. Yeah. Um, we're now taking it on for that growth. Yeah. To occur. Everyone's on the same page, yeah. all looking for the same goals. Yeah. yeah. Which is really nice yeah. position to be in now. And how have the expectations changed from last season to this one? Uh, there's been a lot of 
a drive for um, elite standards, which is a great change. Um, everyone's pushing pushing each other to the limit. Iron sharpens iron, as we say. Um, so that's been really good to see, making each other better, more accountable. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like even um, in our training standards, they've lifted. So yeah. when we have gone to those practice matches, I know I've come out not feeling as sore because yeah. our trainings, we've been just hitting bodies. Yeah. We've been going for From those contested marks. Yeah. Like we've been actually, yeah, putting in that hard yards to, yeah. as you said, the iron sharpens iron that we came out of those practice matches with our bodies already accustomed to taking yeah. those hits and to yeah. putting in that effort so yeah and we're doing that from day one of pre-season which yeah. is awesome yeah, yeah. which is so months of training yeah a bit exciting yeah um and how's training during the day so it's impacted you by reducing workloads yeah reducing part or going to part-time studies but what's the benefits from it uh it's great just shove that in there um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been a real good change, I reckon, for the team as a whole because we feel like we're taken more seriously. Everyone's more accountable. Everyone's here to get better. The elite standards it helps us lift those standards, which I love. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, good environment to be around. Feel I more included. It, yeah, and it makes you feel like you're a professional athlete. Yeah, like this is what professional athletes do. It's their job. Like it's yeah. not that part time hobby. After working a long day, we come in. Like yeah. exhausted to do our four till ten PM yeah. kind of extra shift. And then get up early for work the next day. It's yeah. a lot more balance. Work life footy balance is better. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been a really good change. And like you said, to be able to be at work at our footy with everyone at the club still in their work hours yeah. and things like that has just got a different feel when you go you can go get a coffee with yeah. some people from yeah. um the different departments yeah. within Carlton. It's just really nice to have that interaction yeah. with them you feel more like that one club yeah it's a good club feel about yeah. it you walk around and you know everyone and what everyone does which is nice yeah, yeah it's really nice and personal goals for the season on field would probably um settling into the new sort of position on the wing um establishing my roles in the team um off field or yeah off field mainly just being that that team player just doing everything I can to support the team mm. in any role I can. Yeah. Yeah. How have you gone? Um, so we talk about like our elite habits and things like that outside of our training days. How have you gone implementing that into your day-to-day -day life? Uh, it's made it a lot better when we train during the day because it gives me more time to focus on recovery, extra like Pilates or extra workouts I need to work on outside of footy. It gives me time to do that during my week. So that's been good, yeah. Just yeah. going to the beach during recovery, yeah. How good is a little beach sesh? Yeah, love a beach sesh. Rate it. Yeah. I was there yesterday. I was freezing, but it makes you feel so it good. It does, yeah. How good is living near the beach, though? Just, just oh, saying. Rate it. Yeah. Vitamin C. <laughs> <laughs> How good. Um, and main focus, focuses personally throughout your preseason, what have they been? Um, Just, again, on that wing role, just understanding – how I fit into the team with that role and, well, both roles going back to defender as well. Uh, just focusing on developing my game to make the mm. team better, I guess, as well. Yeah. yeah. How, how have you gone with, like, the skill development? Because we've been, like, focusing a lot on that, especially in that pre-preseason. Yeah. We had a lot of those sessions that were just that skill-focused yeah. um, sessions. How yeah. did you find them? Yeah, they were really good, especially implementing them early on in the pre-season, even pre-pre-season. Um, they were good. They let us allowed us to develop our skills in ways that we needed to that were more individual craft mm. to develop individual game styles. So, yeah. yeah. I know for me it almost like gives me more confidence in hitting yeah. that kick or yeah. being able to like launch for that mark knowing that I've put in that time and effort yeah. Yeah. so consistently to – do it with yeah doing it at training to then implement it into games it gives you that confidence yeah, yeah I agree yeah. yeah it's been yeah quite a good process really yeah and the younger kids coming through yes how do you find them what do you think about them all who's your go-to players to watch from the young crop Ooh, the young crop. Um, <laughs> the 04s, like they call yeah. themselves, apparently. Oh, my gosh. 04. Um, yeah, what makes, were you doing in 04? I was 
two years old. Oh, shivers. <laughs> I was in year four, <laughs> back in my day. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. 04. I reckon, I don't know if she's 04 or not, but she's younger. Uh, Mia Austin is mm-hmm. someone to look out for. She is a gun forward. Her her marks are unbelievable. She's just been launching at Yeah, it. she's just unbelievable. Also, um, Keely Sharar. Yeah. She is a little whippet in that midfield. You don't see her coming. She just comes out of nowhere. She just spins and then just yeah. is off. And then she's running and you're like, well, yeah. can't catch her now. Uh, I'll catch up. Are <laughs> oh, you later? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be my my top two to watch, I reckon, this season. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. I, I reckon Hendry, Maddie yes, Hendry's yeah. come in. She's my age though, so I wouldn't call her young. Is she? Yeah, she's 21, isn't she? I, I actually don't yeah. know. Well, she's a newbie. Yeah, yeah she's a newbie, but... Yeah, Maddie Hendry's come yeah, in and cool. just, yeah, really developed and really taken it in her stride Yeah, um, with how she's gone about things. And then Skep's always yeah. running, yeah. running, running, yeah. running. Yeah, <laughs> that's Skep for you. Yeah. yeah, a little wind her up and let her go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah. 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 she'll always, that left foot, brutal. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. lethal. It will, yeah. And um, focuses for the group for round one and just the season in general. Just stick to our game plan, play the footy, the brand of footy that we want. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's... I think, yeah, I was chatting to Dell about this and it was like we just need to go in there and give it our all because we won't know if um, our game plan will work or anything if people aren't giving that 110%. Yeah. So it's really just that confidence to go in there and absolutely smash it, yeah. like to launch yourself at yeah. that tackle, launch yourself at that ball, like to roll up, like to just yeah. really pressure, the, yeah, pressure the ball. Yeah. I was going <laughs> to. Um, yeah, to just pressure the ball so then we can work on the game plan from there. So yeah. it's, I think that focus of just really giving 110% effort yeah. is probably what people will get to see Yeah, because um, we are taking a lot from the men's game. So yeah. it is that exciting brand of footy that mm. we will look to take a risky kick here and there. Yeah. Like we will look to do that thing but yeah. we've got the confidence of people behind us like yeah we've got was, that confidence to do that i yeah. guess yeah if someone you see someone in front of you giving 110 percent, you're going to go as well so it really lifts the whole team up which yeah. is great to see yeah. yeah so i am excited to see that on saturday yes. at 105 yep. at icon park <laughs> get there if you can or Inverse. just get there just get <laughs> there just get there um and how do you plan to stay motivated over the 10 week it was just the season, yeah. really. Well, it is a really short season, um, so it goes by in a blink. It's over before you know it. Um, I don't know. I just well, I just love it here. So yeah. I'm motivated whenever I come in here. Whenever I see my teammates, just to get better, improve yeah. the team. Yeah. And I think yeah, as you said, the ten week season, it's quite easy to stay motivated for yeah. because you only get to play these 10 games throughout a year now. Yeah, like the- last year we were kind of lucky we got those two seasons yeah. in a year, so we played a fair bit of footy, yeah. whereas 10 weeks and then nine months off or whatever yeah, it yeah. is. Um, yeah, I think it's quite easy to stay motivated because every game just means so much yeah, to it be matters. playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's why people take injuries or things like that so hard because you're like, if you miss out on one game, you're like, well, there's 10% of the season. Yep, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's an easy one to stay motivated for. And I'm just really excited to see yeah. what brand of footy we can produce and how exciting we can be to hopefully go beyond the 10 games yeah, if yeah. we can. So we talked a bit about like the crossover with the day trainings, yep. working or seeing the men's program and things like that. What learnings have you taken away from even just like the little crossovers with them and watching them train? I think we've had yep. a couple of sessions where we've just been able to see them in the gym, like watch their sessions. Yeah. Like people have had opportunities to go to their education and like I know for me I've worked with Cruiser. Is it Cruiser? Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I just called him Cruz. I want to join the Cruz Academy. Um, so I've had opportunities yeah. to work with him and through Pido and all of that to just work on that tall gal rut craft thing. Yeah. Um, I found it really rewarding. How have you found it? Yeah, it's been really good, especially being able to watch them train and what their training standards are because they're here pretty much every single day of the week. So it could get quite um, exhausting for them, but they still, when they're here, they turn up 
and they're here to train. So that's been really beneficial to see. Uh, also going to the education sessions, it's good to see the different perspectives that the boys have and how they go into games and what they look at and what their focuses are necessarily because they're not necessarily just about winning. It's mm-hmm. about how they execute certain game Tough. plans. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know. I remember Moods and I rocked up to one of the, I think it was a pregame speech of um, yeah. one of their practice matches. And we go into the theatre. I don't think we were meant to do it. We just stumbled upon <laughs> yeah. it. And going into the theatre, you've got some of the players are stood up in the corners, like they're yeah. moving. They've got like seated like a couple of seats away from each other. They're all fidgety. They're just ready to go. Yeah. And then I look at sometimes our sessions at pre-training and we're all just like sat there, we're ready, like we're yeah. ready. <laughs> Almost got like notebooks. the school kids, we've got our notebooks, we're ready to go. Yeah. Whereas like the boys are just so scattered and just so edgy. I was like, oh, this is so cool to just yeah. see that different environment about yeah. how each player is comfortable to do their own thing, to yeah. know what pumps them up what for a game for them, or yeah. what works for them. So I know I found that finding, I was like, oh, it could be like that difference between that male, female kind yeah. of aspect, I guess. But um, yeah, it, did make me laugh. I was like, we're just such the school kids. Yeah, like, always we're in do like right. three rows and then yeah. just all ready to go. The yeah. boys and are just everywhere over the theatre. <laughs> fidgeting all over the yeah. place. <laughs> all right. And <laughs> what are you most looking forward to in the season? Uh, probably to watch the newbies get out there, especially the Irish girls. That'd be exciting yeah. to see. Um, be quite scary and exciting for them as well but yeah I reckon it'll be yeah good to watch I, yeah. I like that yeah and um what's the most enticing part about round one and playing Ooh. round one so we don't get the season opener this we year don't, no a bit um, heartbreaking Missy Higgins I hear is playing yeah I saw that today oh That's give me right. a bit of scar <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that for a pregame, but that's anyway. okay. <laughs> anyway, what are you most excited about for round one? <laughs> um, I'm excited to see the fans turn up and just the environment that they create because that just lifts the whole game up and it just creates this whole atmosphere that's so exciting and you just you walk out onto the ground and you're like, this is awesome, this is where I want to be, this is just everything. It's, yeah. Yeah, so good. So I did hear a rumour oh. there's a men's open training session Saturday morning. Oh. So there is an open training session that Saturday morning. So hopefully game. people will stick around. Yeah. Because um, I think there will be things on and all sorts to stick around for our season opener because – once again, just using that one club approach, the yeah. boys are doing so well, um, yeah. making finals for the first time in like 10 years. Yeah. To just ride that wave would be awesome to see yeah. some of the fans yeah. stick around. and You hear out. it here first, guys. I don't know which that one. They're both Stay- on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get stick to the around. ground. Stick to the ground. Stick to the ground. Stick, stick around. Stick around. Um, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> great promo. But um, thank you. Oh, thanks for joining me. Thanks, thanks to the great me. Southern Bank for helping us out, getting to know you. Yeah. Um, once again, don't miss our first game at Icon Park. Saturday the 2nd of September against Gold Coast. It's sure to be a fiery game. Yeah. Ayo. Hey. Goodbye. Hey. <laughs>